Are you looking for tiny portable gasoline generator that you can take with you on a trip or just have an alternate source of power in case of power outage? Today we'll take a close look up at the small yet pretty sufficient for most daily tasks 750 watt gasoline power inverter generator from ITC Power model GG9i. In this video we'll quickly look at the main features of this power generator, explain and go through all the prep steps before firing it up and test it to verify that it's working and can output power. By the way, if you're new to the channel, take a second to subscribe. I'm going to have another video how to maintain and replace oil in this generator, so subscribe not to miss new videos. First, let me explain the difference between regular and inverter type of power generators. While regular gasoline generators and inverter gasoline generators serve the same basic purpose of providing portable power, but they differ in their design, performance and functionality. Conventional generators are suitable for powering basic electronic appliances and tools, especially those that don't require extremely stable power. They are commonly used for emergency backup power, construction sites and other industrial applications. Inverter generators, on the other hand, are ideal for powering sensitive electronic devices, recreational activities and situations where quiet operation and portability are essential. Inverter generators also have increased fuel efficiency, however, they come at a higher cost compared to conventional generators. With that out of the way, let's have a look at this little guy. Here are the brief specs for this generator. Nominal power output is 750 watt. Max short term power output is 900 watt. Output voltage is 230 volt. It also has a 12 volt output and the weight is 9.3 kilograms, which is very light. Keep in mind there is no oil in the unit, so don't attempt to start it right away. Let's see what comes with the generator. In the package there is Philip head screwdriver, a spark plug wrench, 12 volt DC cigarette lighter plug with couple crocodile clips on the other side. I like the color gamut of white, yellow and silver, looks clean and the colors are matching good. There is a handy carrying handle so considering its low weight it is easy to move around. On the left side there is an oil filter compartment secured with a screw. There is also a fuel primer pump, choke lever to facilitate starting, fuel on and off switch and a recoil starter. At the bottom there are 4 rubber pads to decrease vibration. At the front we have a rubberized regular AC power outlet with a cap, a 12 volt DC cigarette lighter socket with a rubber protective cap, two USB ports with rubber protective cap, eco on and off control switch, parallel outlets for connecting additional generator to double the output, DC power button, output reset button, and indicator LEDs for AC pilot light overload indicator light and oil warning light. On the left side there is only a logo and specs for the generator. At the top we have a vented fuel filler cap. In the fuel filler there is a screen to catch any sorts of large contamination in fuel. At the back there is a muffler exhaust pipe with a metal mesh screen secured by a small gear clamp. Later we'll remove that back plastic cover and remove the metal mesh screen and install an exhaust extension hose so we can actually drive the fumes out further in case you're using it indoors or you're using somewhere close to indoors and you want to get the fumes further out but for now let's go ahead and continue looking what we got with this generator there is also a user manual included that will help you work and maintain your power generator because i'm going to be using it indoors i want to drive the fumes further out so we're going to have to remove this back plastic cover. There are four screws that you need to remove. So you can just use a regular ratchet and wrench with a 8mm socket or just use a screwdriver with the 8mm socket. It is very simple. Just unscrew all four screws and then you can take off this plastic cover out. And the back plastic grill is held by two latches on the sides. All you need to do is just pull it and it actually comes out very easily. As you can see there is a metal mesh screen on the exhaust pipe at the back. We need to remove it. This is just a warm gear clamp. So you can just use a screwdriver to unscrew it and just take it off. I will be using the socket instead because I cannot get the screwdriver to fit there because it's a little bit recessed in the case and I cannot get the screwdriver there. Or well, you would need a really short screwdriver which I don't have. 
I'm just gonna use a ratchet and wrench with the socket. It's good to have some short stubby tools because sometimes you need to reach to very tight spots where you need some really short tools. All right, there we go, we got it off. See, it's just little metal mesh. Let's go ahead and measure the diameter of the pipe. And the best I could measure, it's actually a little bit smaller. It's uh, 0.45 of an inch. Pretty positive it's metric. It's probably gonna be 12 mil or 11 and a half. Maybe it's 11 mil because I cannot really measure it straight because it's recessed in the case. So I would say it's probably 11 mil pipe. So if you're using 11 mil or 12 mil hose ID and then just use the gear clamp, it will work no problem. Before starting the generator, of course, you're gonna need to fill it up with fuel. Since this is a gas generator, we would need some regular gas and add some oil to the engine. Adding the oil is very easy. You would need to remove the screw that's holding the engine oil compartment door, then remove the dipstick, put a funnel and add some oil. I have measured around 200 milliliters, but it could be slightly different. So what you need to do, you need to put some oil, get the dipstick in, measure with the dipstick. If it's not enough, just add a little bit more and keep repeating it until you get the oil level to the full mark and this is gonna be full. Make sure you don't overfill it because it will not be good for the engine. So you need to fill it up only to the max mark and it should be no less than minimal mark because then it's gonna be not enough and it might damage the engine. But it also has an oil warning light. If there is not enough oil, it should warn you about that with an LED light up front and potentially it will even stop by itself. But I wouldn't try it and I wouldn't suggest you try it either. So. Make sure you fill it up with the proper amount of oil using the proper oil. According to the manual, the engine oil is going to be 10W30 for most occasions, but also depending when you're using it, if it's too hot or too cold, you could be using different type of oil such as 20W30. I will be using only 10W30 because I don't plan to use it in extreme temperatures. And later we'll be doing an oil change and I'll show you in details how to do it. So. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. And let's proceed with the testing. So let's go through the starting procedure. First, turn on the power switch to the on position. Make sure that the vent on the fuel filler cap is open. If it's a fresh cold start, like you haven't started it before, use the fuel primer pump to pump some fuel into the engine. You can just pump like five, six times. That should be enough. Then put the choke lever into the choke position and use the recoil start to start the engine. After the engine has started, switch the choke lever back to the run position and it should be running smooth. Usually it starts pretty easily from the first attempt, but if it doesn't start from the first attempt, if it's been sitting for a while, it might require two or three attempts. But like I said, it usually doesn't require that. Only if it's an old engine or something, but on the new machines, it usually starts right away. All right, let's go ahead and do the first test. As you can see, it just powering up an LED light, very light duty. So it's only 14 watt power consumption right now, but the generator is working and that's what we need to know. Then we can test it with a higher load later, but first we wanna make sure it's actually working and running. As you can see, I'm just testing the LED light. Now we're gonna test it with the boiler and it should actually consume a lot of power. And as you can see, it actually has uh, it was overload, I think, because it's just showing zero, so the, it's not outputting any power at all. This is what happens when you connect something very powerful. As you can see, it's almost 600 watt, so it is very powerful. I cannot run it for a very long time, otherwise it will just damage the boiler because you need to boil the water, you can't just use it like that. But as you can see, it was showing 600 watt, so indeed it can output 600 watt. And there is also an eco mode, as you can see. And this is in case you're using like half of the maximum power output. Like right now, I'm only running a light bulb, so you don't really need to run it a full mode. You can just use the eco mode, and then it will save gasoline, and it will not work as hard. So you're gonna get better fuel efficiency, and it can run longer on the same amount of fuel. I have also tested with the fridge and the peak power consumption when the fridge compressor started was 1100 watts so it was over a kilowatt of power consumption and the generator handled it once in a while. Sometimes it shut off and sometimes it managed to actually work through it and once the fridge compressor started it started consuming way less it was like 200 watts but it was able to handle 1100 watts for a few seconds 
So definitely 900 watt peak power consumption. That's what it's that its limit, and it could handle it. But it was even able to handle more than that. But of course, it's not guaranteed because it was shutting off, and I had to restart it by hand. The exhaust hood worked out very well. The exhaust fumes are driven out further, so it's not right where you are. And you can actually put it through the window or through any hole, and then it will dry out the fumes outside instead of just having the fumes inside. There you have it guys, I hope you find this video helpful. If you like it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more helpful, interesting videos. In the next video, I'll show you how to maintain this power generator and you can also apply the same procedure to other power generators as well. They might be slightly different depending on the model, but most steps will be similar. So make sure to click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. If you have comments, questions, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer your questions and help you if I can. But this is it for now. I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.